He's coming down the street now, then. And he's carrying a bag. Well, I'll be... Now, don't holler at him, Daddy, till we find out where he's been. Yeah, it's me, Graham. I've lost my glasses and can't seem to find them. Be right up. You'll sit down, young man. I want to talk to you. It'll take just a second. Paul. Seconds too long. That traitor upstairs can wait for our glasses. You sit down. Spence, you don't look well. Where have you been? Spence, I haven't told them a thing, and if they say I have, they're lying. Look, will you shut her up? Mama, please. Oh, shut up yourself. Mother, please, mother, please. Why don't you just tell me to shut up and be done with it? Spence, I smell beer on your breath. Have you been drinking beer? Yeah, right after two shots of whiskey. Well, I'll be damned. Now, Daddy, please. Don't be calling that man Daddy. He's no husband of mine. Who have you been drinking beer with, Spence? I'd rather not say, Ma. Why not? Because you wouldn't know anyway. I'd still like to know. Look, Mom, I'm trying to be honest with you. If you keep asking me, I'm going to start lying about it. And I'd, I'd rather not lie about it, Mom. Then don't think we don't know you were kicked out of school today. Well, goody for you, Pop. You better talk to this little bum, May, before I break his neck. There he goes again. It's disgraceful. Do you know what you did that was wrong? I didn't do anything that was wrong, Mom. Then that settles it. He was kicked out of school for just doing nothing. I didn't mean I didn't do anything, Pop. I just thought I was justified, that's all. He was justified. We got a genius on our hands, May. He knows more than the teacher. Where'd you get that cigar? Out of your box. There you are. In other words, you've been stealing your father's cigars? I wouldn't exactly call it that, Ma. Well, that's damn well what I'd call it. Your father, Spence, will go up to the school with you on Monday. You will apologize to Miss Bailey and be reinstated in school. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Mom, but I, I can't see my way clear to doing that. You mean you're going to disobey both your father and me? I'm not going to disobey either of you, Mom. I just kind of thought you'd be on my side, that's all. You're going to do as you're told. All right, you can make me go up there, but I'm not going to apologize to anyone. Stop talking back to your mother. I'm not talking back to her. I just wanted to understand how I feel, that's all. But we don't care how you feel. Now, what do you think of that? You talk about what you'll do and what you won't do. We do things we don't want to do every day of our lives. I hear those crumbs down at the bank talking about niggas, making jokes about niggas. But I stay on because I need the job so that I can get the things that you need. What do you do? You get still a little behind, kicked out of school, now you're too proud to go back. Will you listen to that man running his big mouth? Uh. We've never been so humiliated. All the neighbors are talking. I'm um, sorry about that, Mom. You're not sorry at all. If you were, you would have prevented it. We've bent every effort to see that you were raised in a decent neighborhood. And what is more, you've never been denied anything, Spence. We didn't want you to live in slums because we always wanted the best for you. And you have no business talking back to white women, no matter what they say or what they do. If you were in the South, you could be lynched for that. And your father and I couldn't do anything about it. So from now on, my advice to you is try and remember your place. You'll pardon me for saying so, Mama. That's the biggest hunk of bull I've ever heard in my whole life. What the hell was that you said? You both ought to be ashamed to talk to me that way. Now you get the hell on upstairs. Don't you come down here until you can apologize to both of us. Go on! All right, Pop, I'll go upstairs. Because you're my father and I still have to do what you tell me to. But I'm still ashamed of you, and I want you both to know it. And you go straight to your room. Don't you go stopping by that traitor's room. Who's to stop him, I'd like to know. I will. If you come in my room with that nasty mouth of yours, I'll slap every tooth down your throat. It's a fine state of affairs when a man can't have a little respect in his own home. What has either of you done to get respect, I'd like to know? Nothing but bully the boy. All right now, Mother, you stay out of it. I'll not keep out of it. 
And I got something to say, I say it, and you know it. So don't try to hush me up. Mother, if you come down these stairs, I'm going to tell the doctor. Oh, tell him, smell him, knock him down and sell him. What do you think I care? All this slapping and going on. Mother, please. Oh, let her run herself down. Won't take long. That's where you're wrong. I have no intentions of running down. I got a few things to say, and I'm going to say them. Well, go ahead and say it and get it over with. I will. Don't you worry about that. Now, in the first place, that nasty little hudge that teaches history up at that school deserves exactly what she got. The only thing I think is Spence didn't tell her enough. He can't go around talking to people like that. Well, that's a lot of twaddle, and you know it. Now, in the second place, when you moved down here, did you ever stop to take into consideration that something like this was bound to happen sooner or later? And that the most important thing might have been just your love and comfort? <laughs> you did not. Went right on working. And instead of your company, he got a book, a bicycle, electric train. Well, the stuff that came in this house was ridiculous. Well, that's none of your business. Will you let me finish? I don't go along with that kind of raising one way or the other. Allow me to be the first to tell you both. Do you know that that boy is absolutely alone? He hasn't got a friend in the world. You didn't know, did you? That all his little pals have taken up with the girls. And the little girls' mothers don't want their daughters going around with a colored boy. Well, whether you know it or not, he's alone. And now you want to forsake him completely by not backing him up. You moved him out of the slums. Taught him to think of himself as something to be respected. And now you're getting mad because he does the very thing that you made it possible for him to do. That bull, as he called it, about staying in his place. Well, I'm ashamed of both of you, and I want you to know it. You said what I come down to say. Help me up off this couch. Well, don't sit there like a dumb ox. Come on and help me. You hadn't ought to come downstairs, Mama. You know that. I come downstairs when I want to. And what do you think of that? Trouble with you two? You're too careful. I'm an old woman. I ain't got much longer to live one way or the other. So I'll come downstairs when I want to. Mama, did Spence tell you all this? Well, I certainly didn't hear it by talking to the neighbors. Well, why didn't he say so when we were talking with him? How could he? You both attacked him just like a rattlesnake the minute he got in the door. We did not. You did so? And I think you ought to apologize to him. Don't be a crumb all your life. Why didn't you tell me all this was going on, May? Because I didn't know, Daddy. Well, it's a mother's business to know what's happening to her son, isn't it? You know, I didn't know how it would take place, but I knew it would turn out to be my fault. Oh, well, I didn't oh, mean... Oh, shut up. What's that you said to me? I said, shut up. I told you not to hop on him the minute he came in the house. Maybe if you'd ask him questions instead of calling him names, you would have found this all out, and you wouldn't have to stand there looking so foolish now. You were just as bad as I was. Spence is hungry. I am going out in the kitchen and warm his food. You go upstairs and talk to him. Now go. 